Hello everyone, it is Tomaruk here and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be doing Raids 3. Yes, here we go. So with the zero invocations I can get the thread of Alandius or whatever it's pronounced which makes your room pouch get four slots. I can also get all three of the parts and gems. There is actually a chance that I can get everything else but the chance is realistically nothing. Like there's a very low chance I can get the rest of the items on the entry mode. But I think it's just a good idea to use Entry for the first few attempts just to learn the mechanics. And before we get into this, I am just going to say I am one of the biggest noobs when it comes to PVM. I have barely done anything. I've never done TOB. I've done a few raids. I've done 27 raids, but every time I was getting heavily carried by my team. <laughs> like, they were telling me what to pray and everything over voice communication. So, yeah, I'm a big noob when it comes to PVM. Now, whilst learning the raid, there was an awful lot of this. What the heck is this? How the hell did I manage to do this? <laughs> I don't even know. Help, I'm stuck. No, I'm dead. No, you Donkey Kong having ass. Bruh. But many hours later, I did finally manage to get my first kill count on learner difficulty. And I'm about to show you that now. Yes. Yes, I've done it. Second attempt. Oh. 9 HP, oh, I didn't even know what the potions were doing, I was just chugging them down thinking I'll be able to do it. I cannot believe I've done it. I know it's entry mode right, but I still cannot believe I've done that. Wait a minute, am I ready to leave? No, 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 no. I have my chest. Open that bad boy up. Two cash of runes and dragon dart tips. I'm gonna go do that again. Oh wait, I need to take it out. The cash of runes, 2,377 death runes. Ooh, that is a big chunk of loot. What's in this one? 2,317 souls. That is actually pretty decent loot to be fair. I did complete three more entry mode raids, and then I decided it was time to up the ante and push myself for the 150 raids. And here we are with my first ever successful normal level raid. 150 levels. And I noticed that everyone was ranting and raving how good the dragon claws are on the last phase of this fight. So I decided to pick up a pair. And the reason that they're so good is that little blue potion there means that less of your special attack bar is used per spec. So instead of just two declaw specs, you get four instead. And they absolutely shred this guy. The potions that you get inside this raid are honestly really, really good. That white potion in my inventory, if you take a drink of that, it restores your health to 125 and your prayer to full as well. It is crazy. It's so good. So my strategy has just been to save those white potions right until the end boss and use them up there. And my first ever normal raid was 37 minutes and 44 seconds. So if you do manage to get yourself off of the rare rewards table, that little sarcophagus in the middle will light up purple. But, yeah, didn't get lucky this time. Oh, <laughs> not great, not great. Now, I did die once in this raid, but it wasn't to any bosses. It was in the monkey room. I messed up and died, and I thought, ah, I'll just keep going. Ooh, that one was a little tougher, but that was a zero death run. No deaths at all. Feels good, man. Feels good. Alright, let's see what we got from this raid. Anything good? No. Kill count number three coming in. And I totally forgot to use my dragon claws. Well, I did use them, but I forgot to drink the blue potion that gives me more spec. So yeah, that, that didn't work out too well. And now it is time to find out if we got anything decent from kill count number three. Did we get anything good? N no. I'm gonna see a purple sarcophagus one of these days, don't you worry. One more, one more. Yes! He is dead. Ooh, that one was clutch. I only had one sip of that health potion left. I did die once on the last boss as well, so I had to redo the warden's fight. So I was so worried I was gonna run out of supplies. Anything good today, Mr. Chest? E Ooh, what is this? Blood essence? Uh, uh, is this new? It's only worth 198k. Hmm. Okay, so I have googled it. This came out when next came out. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this. It's something to do with blood rune crafting. You get more runes or something. So, yeah. A little bit of money, but unfortunately, nothing unique. And he is dead. Woohoo! 
I'm definitely getting better at this. Look how many supplies I had left. Loads, man, loads. And that is kill count number five. And a new personal best, 35 minutes and 14 seconds. Nice, nice. Uh, cask of runes and... Ooh, hoo, hoo, Eye of the Corrupter. Oh, this is one of the jewels for the Keras Partisan. I'm going to have to see what one this is. Oh, man. It looks so cool, though. Uh, my first unique is on the account. Uh, I'm so happy. So the special attack for this gives me a 100% increase to accuracy and a 25% increase to the player's damage. And whatever you use this spec on will also receive a 25% increased damage for 6 whole seconds. So this will be really good for group raids, maybe not so good for solos because... After you use a special attack, you can't attack for 4.8 seconds, so you're gonna really need to have a team behind you. But having this will be really good for team raids. If you guys are enjoying the video, hit the like button, and if you want to see more content from me in the future, hit the subscribe button down below. So before you can get to the main boss, you need to fight four bosses beforehand, and each of those bosses have their own puzzle room. And these bosses can be done in any order you want, but I've always just stuck with the same order. It's worked for me. So this is the first puzzle room that I always go for, and it is the little monkey room. Now this is my least favourite one, so I like to get out of the road right at the start. This room usually takes me between three and a half minutes to four and a half minutes. It depends how quick I am. Essentially, all you have to do is repair one pillar or a little hole in the ground whenever a red skull pops up, and you just need to kill waves after waves of enemies. So the red ones are weak to magic, the blue ones are weak to range, and the green ones are weak to melee. There is a couple of things to watch out for though, and that is the volatile monkeys. They will blow up, and you do not want to get hit by those. They hit like a truck. And the shamans as well, you want to be killing them very quick too because they summon those little thrall guys and they also drain your prayer as well, so not very good letting them live for too long. And finally we have the poisonous monkeys and I do kill them as soon as possible as well because those ones are a pain when you're running around. And after this puzzle room, you are faced with Baba, the big old monkey. And this one's actually probably my favourite boss out of them all. I don't actually usually have too much problems with Baba, so I normally have all the invocations on, apart from the faster rolling boulder one. So every so often, Baba will shake the ground and big rocks will fall from the sky. And you want to run behind them as soon as possible. Because soon after, he will be throwing a big ass boulder at you, and if you're not standing beside one of those rocks, you are gonna get hit like a truck. He also has this ground slam thing that you need to keep an eye on, but you can usually telegraph it. He kind of stops what he's doing and moves a little bit, so you can kind of tell when he's about to do it. There's also little baboons in the arena as well that spawn from time to time, and you want to kill them as soon as possible, because there are little sarcophaguses around the room, and if they manage to crack one of those open, yeah, they deal quite a bit of damage to you. And the final mechanic for Baba is these big ass rolling boulders. He'll knock you right to the back, you have to make sure that you hit the correct one to get back to the top. So when I first started doing this, I would just attack the boulders and wait until Baba came back down to me. But I did end up watching Wooks and I noticed that he was doing something quite interesting. Turns out that if you time it correctly, once you've hit a couple of the boulders, you can run all the way up to the top and cancel the rest of them. And this guy has got to be my favourite boss art design wise. A big undead looking monkey. I love it. Big old Baba. In the room as well, I really love the idea of the whole slope thing. Ah, it's just beautiful. Jagex have honestly done an amazing job with this boss. Oh, I mean, they've done an amazing job with all of the bosses, but this one, I love. The next path that I always take is the path of Scarabus. So if you're doing this solo, you need to complete three different puzzles before you can get to Kefri, the big bug. But it is not just as simple as completing the puzzles. Once every so often, one of these Scarab guys will come out and they are a pain in the ass. I'll tell you that right now. And then finally, you are faced with Kefri, the big ass poop beetle. And it's actually a very easy fight. I would say Baba's probably the easiest for me, and then Kefri is a close second. 
and the Keras Partisan works absolute wonders here. It just hits a lot of damage, but Kefri does have a lot of defence, so you do end up hitting quite a lot of zeros. The mechanics on Kefri are quite simple though, she'll just throw up big ass balls like Vorkaf does, and you just need to make sure that you stand out the way. She does have a few phases, but every time you get her shield all the way to zero, a bunch of scarab guys will come up, and you just want to kill them as quick as possible, especially the mage one, because if you don't kill that in time, you take a hell of a lot of damage. But apart from that, there's not really much else. She will throw a big roll of poop at you, and you just need to make sure that you're standing in an okay position, otherwise you can get trapped. And I've been trapped quite a few times. And here we are with the Path of Krondus. This one is actually kind of okay. Sometimes I do alright, sometimes I do terribly. Essentially, all you want to do is pick up the water container, fill it up at one of the four fountains after running through those little crocodile things, and then you want to come back and water it, killing those little crocodiles because those will eat the plant, meaning that all your hard work will go to waste. And after you complete that puzzle room, you are faced with Zback, the big old crocodile. This guy's kind of like Jad, you just want to make sure that you're praying either range or magic, and he'll swap every so often. The hardest thing about this boss is these little jugs that you need to push. If you're not fast enough, you will get absolutely <laughs> screamed on. It is not a fun thing to experience. So you just want to push the jugs, attack them near the rocks, and hide behind them, and hope that you're quick enough. And every so often, he will throw some waves on the ground as well, kind of like the Dragon Slayer 2 fight. But yeah, I don't mind that one at all. It's mainly the screaming one that really, really gets me. Then we have the path of hit. All you really want to do here is pick up a bunch of mirrors and place them correctly so that the beam of light hits the shielded guy. I actually find this room nice and chill. I really enjoy it. And then you just use your pickaxe and smack away at the rock. And after that room, you are faced with Aka. So he'll swap his attack style every so often, so you'll have to swap prayers and he will swap his overhead prayers as well, so you're going to have to keep an eye on that. And these lights in the middle of the room as well, they'll light up every so often, and you need to make sure that you memorise the sequence, otherwise you're going to get blasted with fire. And the scariest part of this boss is, once you get him to low enough health, these little white orbs will just fly around the room. Sometimes I do okay on this phase, sometimes I am so close to death. And once you've completed all four of the rooms, you are faced with the final boss. So once the fight is started, I always stand on the right side of the obelisk, ranging the little obelisk in the middle. And the reason I'm taking all that damage is, if you let them charge at the same time, those little pyramids come at the exact same time, and you can't avoid taking any damage. And once you've killed the obelisk, you are faced with the first warden. I actually find this guy relatively difficult, and he can attack with melee, ranged or magic, and he has a couple of special attacks as well. He can turn off your prayer and then shoot an orb at you that can either be ranged or magic, so you need to be quick on your toes there. And once you've charged his bar all the way to the top, he will fall to the ground and his core will fall out onto the ground, so you can attack it. The cool thing about this core is that you always do max hit as well. Ugh, it is so satisfying. And once the first warden is dead, you are faced with the final challenge, the second warden. And after a while, this guy does get quite easy to do, but it does take a while to get used to the pattern. My favourite weapon for this phase is the Bofa, I just feel like I have a lot more control over where I'm walking. After a while, Aka and Kefri will spawn as well, so you need to make sure you're doing your prayers correctly for Aka and moving out the road for Kefri. And when you get this warden to low enough HP, it goes into overdrive. It starts pulling all the tiles away slowly, one after another, and shooting lightning everywhere. It gets crazy. And that's where the D-Claws come in clutch, because you can get a lot of the HP away just from a few specs. So these are the invocations that I am running on a solo 150 raid. I run the softcore run, which limits the overall number of attempts by three. So I can only die three times here. Then I'm taking on a diet so food no longer heals you within the raid. And for Kefri, I have the one where her eggs are more troublesome and Kefri's dung special will be twice as potent. And for Zback, the big old croc, I have the blood magic one added onto him and also the radius of healing from Zback's blood magic will be increased. And on top of that, we have blood thinners, which means Zback's blood magic spawns will be split into three. I don't have any on for Akka though because he is a pain in the backside. I don't bother with that at all. And for Baba, I have all of them turned on apart from Boulder Dash, which makes his boulders go a lot quicker. So I have Mind the Gap, so the pit at the bottom will be a lethal fall. Got to have Faith, which means his sarcophaguses will deal bonus damage based on how many prayer points I'm missing. Jungle Japes means that the baboons will throw banana peels 
on the floor. This one's caught me out a few times, but I, d I take it for the five points. And this one here, the Shockwave from Baba Slam, will cover a wider range. And the last two is Acceleration, which is the Wardens will attack quicker, and the Obelisk will charge at a faster rate at the second phase. And then finally, we have Overclocked, which means the Wardens will attack faster in the final phase of the fight. Now, these ones are doable for me, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm definitely going to be sticking with these from now on. Honestly, I've got to say this is probably the best piece of content I've ever played in old school RuneScape. I am loving it so, so, so much. I'm probably going to be here for a good while now. I definitely want to be seeing a purple soon. But that'll be everything from me today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Sayonara.